there it is quarter million miles on the clock welcome back as you just saw from the little introduction right there the lexus just rolled over 250,000 miles now right now we're technically sitting a little bit over 250,000 let's see where we are 250,008 but listen to her starts right up what more can you ask for now, since I've owned the Lexus, I've done an oil change every 5,000 on the 5,000. Let me pull the keys real quick. There we go. But yeah, keeping in tradition with that, if the last oil changes have been done every 5,000 miles since the life of the car, this would be its 50th oil change. So I don't know if that's exactly right. I don't have the past service records, but I've been doing it every 5,000 miles, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. So I'm going to get out there. I'm going to change the oil. And then I already put out a video on how to change the oil on this or how I usually do it. Go check that out if you want. But this one's going to be a bit different. I usually take my oil samples and I send them into Blackstone Laboratories. They do oil sample analysis, analyses, I don't know, but they take the oil, they analyze it in a lab, then they send you back a report. So I'm going to change the oil now. Um, if you want to see how to do it, check out my other video, I'll link it below. But for the meantime, I'm just going to change the oil. I'm going to collect my sample. You'll see my little sample container that I'll use and then I'll send it out. And in probably a couple weeks, maybe a month, however long it takes, we shall see. So today's date is June 27th of 2022. I'll show you everything that I'm using right now, and then I'll get changing the oil. I'll put in a quick time lapse, and that'll be about it for this section of the video until I get the report back. So here is nothing. Let's pop her open real quick. And right here, look how dusty that is. I took her off-roading a bit this past week. Uh, I'll probably put up the video either before or after this of me crossing 15 Mile Creek. But I've taken this to Green Ridge State Forest off-roading twice now. I have some other videos of me with the Explorer out there, so if you want to check those out, be sure to do that. But yeah, it's a little dusty, needs to be cleaned. I'm going to change out the air filter pretty soon as well, might make a video on that. But here's what I'm going to be using. Got my oil catch can right there. I have 7 quarts of oil because I use about 6.5, 6.6, something like that. I have my oil filter, and then I have my DeWalt 144-piece mechanics tool set, something like that, and my oil filter wrench as well. So... I'm just going to set up a time lapse. If you want to watch that, go check that out. It'll be up right after I finish recording this part. But for the time being, here goes nothing. Now, somehow I forgot to mention this when I was doing my little tour around what I'm using. I have my Blackstone oil analysis kit that they give me. It comes with a little package so you can mail back the oil sample itself. And then you get the actual little container right here. Inside of the container, I'll pop her open to show you guys. Give your information here. Tells you how to pay, gives you information, how many miles, engine make, model, all that good stuff. Little vial so that you can actually collect the oil. Little cloth absorber so that any oil that spills will be absorbed. And then a little plastic bag just to keep it safe. So I'm going to go underneath. While the oil is draining out, I will use that little vial to catch any used oil. I warmed up the engine a little bit before, so it's still about a quarter warm in opposition to a half where it normally runs. So Oil's a little warm, it's been circulated around, it'll be good to go, so now I will get to change the oil. I'm working here fighting daylight going as fast as I can but I just wanted to hop underneath and show you guys this check that out that oil filter is caked in dirt like caked like I've never seen an oil filter sorry trying to get it let me use the other camera with that much dirt on it look at that nice anyways back to oil change Well, I got the new oil in. You can see I spilled a little bit down there, so that'll probably burn off in a few minutes. But I have the old filter off, the new filter on, the new oil in the engine, and I'm going to start her up. Probably take her for a test drive in a bit. Part of my neighbor's dogs, which won't stop barking in the background, but should be good to go. I'll reset the oil light inside, make sure it's all good to go. Take it on a quick test drive and make sure it's not leaking anything, and then 
I'll get this installed later, but I don't feel like I need to record that because that's a pain to install. And who knows how long that'll take, but I beat sundown, so we're looking good. I have my little oil collection vial here. You can see that it's all filled up, so I'm gonna package that up as well once I go back inside and make sure that it's good to mail out. I'll mail that out tomorrow. In the meantime, I just reset the oil light over there so there's no more maintenance required light on. Let me start her up real quick. And barring any major issues, I'm gonna inspect for leaks, just let it run for a little bit, make sure that nothing happens. I'll get the skid plate back on, I'll take it for a test drive, and like I said, as long as nothing happens, the next part of this video will be whenever the oil sample comes back. So I'll package it up, I'll mail it out tomorrow. Today is June 27th, 2022. I will report back once I get the report. All right, well, as promised, here's the email that I received back from Blackstone Laboratories. Uh, hello from Blackstone Laboratories. Your oil report is attached to this email. If you have questions about what the numbers mean, here's an explanation. And I have the explanation pulled up on another device so I can read it to you as we go along. It says, if you can't read this PDF, just ask and we'll send a Microsoft Word version. Questions, problems, reply to this email or give us a call at the provided phone number. So I received this email back on 7 which is just shy of two weeks after I mailed it out on what was it June 28th so took a little less than two weeks which was pretty good return time so I'll pull up the analysis and show it to you now and then reading off the rest of the email before actually getting to the report it says if you are wondering what the numbers are after your unit ID on the attached files name that is the sample date year month day if you have any interesting follow-up information about the sample that you would like to share with us please do so I'll be sending them this video uh, we like to keep learning, and people like you are a great source of information for us analysts. Sincerely, the Blackstone team. So here I have the oil report itself pulled up. You can see Blackstone Laboratories oil report printed at the top. You have your lab information, your unit information, all next to each other on the right-hand side there. Underneath of that is the unit. It has your make and model of your engine, which in my case is a Toyota 4.7 liter V8, which is the 2UZ FE. Uh, the fuel type, Iron 87 octane unleaded gasoline. Additional info, which just has Lexus listed underneath of it because more specifically than a Toyota, it is a Lexus. And then next to that is oil type and grade, which I run Mobile One 5W30 synthetic, and then the oil use interval, which I change every 5,000 miles. Underneath of that is printed the client information. That's where I have my name, my address, my phone number, and my email, which is why I have that all blacked out. And then underneath of that is the comment section. That is my favorite section of the report because it gives you the most information, the most in-depth information explanation of everything that's going on with your engine and what they at the lab think of it. Now reading my comment section here, it says as follows. Michael, if you send us a link once your video is posted, we'd love to see it. Metals, typically aluminum through tin, are generally stable and it's common to find minor variations like we're seeing here. That's a great sign that the engine is still in good health. The oil's high flash point rules out any detectable fuel dilution and low potassium and sodium means there's no significant coolant. Low silicon, often dirt, and insolubles, like solids, means that the air and oil filters did well. The viscosity tested in spec for 5W30 oil. Nice work. This engine's looking good at 250,000 miles. Now I like to see that because not only does it give me confidence that my engine's still running well, but it lets me know that people actually looked through this data and they gave it an in-depth, thorough overlook. So it's looking pretty good. I like the results here. Let's move on. Now looking at the actual elements portion of the analysis sheet here, you can see that we begin with the miles in the oil, so I have 5,000 miles in the oil that was tested, the amount of miles in the engine, which is 250,000, uh, the sample date, which was taken on June 27th of 2022, and then makeup oil is how much oil you added in between oil changes, so in my case I added zero quarts of oil. Underneath of that you can see all of the elements listed, I'll read those off later and show what those mean. Next to that is unit and location averages, which in my case, since that's my oil being tested every single time, it gives the averages between all the tests that I've given. So you can see my previous results there on the right three columns. And then the far right column shows the universal averages, so it shows the average wear for all of the samples that have been seen in this type of engine at Blackstone Laboratories. Now you can also see on the left that elements are listed in parts per million. Now, as I had mentioned before, elements are listed in parts per million in this test. Uh, according to Blackstone's website, it says this list shows the most common sources of elements in gasoline or diesel engine oil. Following each element is a description of where it comes from. They're grouped by category. So I'm looking at their actual report explanation next to me. I'm reading them off as I go along so you'll be able to get a good understanding of what everything means because it's a little hard to interpret if you don't know. So I'll go through each element and then I'll explain where it comes from and what the results are telling me. 
So first off is aluminum coming in at 3 parts per million and from here on out I'll just give the numbers. So I'll just say 3 instead of 3 ppm or parts per million. So 3 is my average and it was also my result from this test and the universal average is 3 for this engine. So it's looking pretty good. It's looking like it's in good shape and it says that aluminum can come from pistons, pistons sorry, bearings, cases, heads and blocks and then in motorcycles the clutch assembly and transmission components. As far as chromium goes, you can see that comes in at zero across the board. I've never had any chromium detected in my engine, and the universal average is zero, so that's a good sign. It says that chromium comes from rings, a trace element in steel. Iron is also a trace element, wear metal. Uh, iron, my results came in at four, compared to my unit average of seven, so it's lower than normal. And the universal average is eight, so it's looking pretty good in that case. Iron comes from cylinders, rotating shafts, the valve train, and any steel part sharing the oil. And in motorcycles, it can come from transmission shafts, gears, and bearings. Copper is another element that came in at zero. Uh, you can see that my universal average is two for this engine, and that my unit average is one. So it's looking pretty good that it came in at a solid zero. And it says here that copper comes from brass or bronze parts in the engine, copper bushings, bearings, and oil coolers. Lead is once again another element that is reading zero across the board. I've never had any lead found in my oil and one is the universal average so it's also looking pretty good. Lead comes from bearings, leaded gas, and fuel additives. I've never added many fuel additives to my engine and I don't run leaded gas so I'm not very surprised by that. Tin, once again I'm reading zero across the board and the universal average for all those engines is also zero. Uh, that comes from bearings, bronze parts, and piston coatings, which is rare. I'm skipping one to keep in line with the wear metals. Nickel is also a wear metal. Uh, that comes from trace elements and steels, platings on some cylinder types, and once again I'm reading zero across the board, which is once again a good sign. Skipping down again, I'm reading silver. Silver is once again reading zero across the board, a good sign because that's less metal wear on the engine, and that comes strictly from your bearings. Moving down to titanium, all of my results have been zero across all of my tests and my universal averages and this test included, and the universal average is a two. Titanium comes from some intake valves and connecting rods, aftermarket parts, and oil additives. Once again, I have zero oil additives in my engine, and I have zero aftermarket parts in my engine, so I'm not too, too surprised by that one either. That's it for all the wear metals. Moving on next is the contaminants. On next, I'll read over the contaminants in terms of elements found in the engine. We'll start with potassium. Potassium in my engine it read zero for this test. My average was one from previous tests before, and the average universally is three. So we're looking pretty good there. And it says that potassium can come from antifreeze or additives in some oil types. Next up is sodium. My reading came in at five compared to my previous average of nine. So this test is looking good compared to before. But the universal average is 35, so I'd say that 5 instead of 35, or 9 instead of 35, is looking pretty good. Uh, sodium comes from antifreeze as well, additive in some gasoline engine oils, and seawater in marine engines, which this is in marine engines, so I don't have to worry about that. My average is looking pretty low, so I'd say I don't have to worry about much there. And lastly, for the contaminants, we have silicon. My result this time was 12, compared to a previous average of 10, so... My result is a bit up since last time, but I put in a new air filter, so hopefully that should take care of it. But it's still lower than the universal average of 14, so it says that silicon comes from airborne dirt escaping air filtration, which, like I said, I put in a new air filter, which should help. Sealers, gaskets, sand-casted parts, spray lubricants, antifreeze inhibitor, or oil additives. So my guess would be the airborne or dirt getting inside, because I did do a decent bit of off-roading the last 5,000 miles, so hopefully the new filter should get rid of that issue and I'm still lower than the universal average so not too too worried about it. That's it in terms of contaminants. Next up in terms of elements are the elements that come from additives. Uh, first off we have molybdenum that is an anti-wear additive and it comes from some types of rings. Uh, my average is 99 this test result showed 94 so a little bit lower than my personal average but the universal average is a 78 so I'm not quite sure if it's something with my rings that would be causing that to go up a little bit but I'm not really putting in any additives, so I'm not too, too worried about that. Next up is manganese. You can see that I'm reading zeros across the board in terms of universal averages, my average, and the test that came back for this time. Uh, it's a trace element, and it's an additive found in some gasolines, but obviously it's not something I have to worry about as I'm reading straight zeros. Next up for the additive elements, we have boron. 
I read 40 for this test, my average is 46, and the universal average is 50. So it was lower than both the universal average and my typical average, and it is a detergent dispersant additive, has antifreeze inhibitors, and so not too, too worried about that, as my results came back once again looking lower than average. Next up we have calcium. My result for this test was 707. My average is 987, which isn't looking too bad given that the average is 1,632 parts per million. So it says here that calcium is a detergent slash dispersant additive, but once again I'm looking far lower than average, so I'm not too, too worried about that. Following calcium is magnesium. I read 710 for this test. My average is 616, so it's pretty high compared to my normal. And then the average is 393, so I'm really not sure why I'm rating so high in terms of magnesium. Once again, I'm not any kind of chemist or engineer or anything along those lines that works with chemicals on a daily basis, but uh, it's just, it is a little concerning there almost, but it's not too, too bad because it's still running all right, and the general comments still said that everything's looking good. I don't know if that's because of my oil or the gasoline that I use, but yeah, I'm honestly not 100% sure there. Phosphorus is the next additive element. Uh, it says that phosphorus is an anti-wear additive. My test result for this time was 692, my average is 661, and the tests from universal averages show 673 is the average, so it's not too, too high above average, it's right around average, so I'll take it. And last up for the additive elements is barium. Uh, it says that barium is a detergent slash dispersant additive used in some synthetic oils. Uh, I read one part per million compared to my average of zero and the universal average of zero, so one over the average being zero. I'm not too, too worried about that. That's it for the additive elements. Now last up is the section at the bottom that I just scrolled to that shows you the properties of the oil. Uh, the test and the properties box on the left shows the physical condition of the oil, and then from left to right it has the past samples, and then it has what the values should be. So looking at the properties, we have viscosity, flash point, fuel percentage, antifreeze percentage, water percentage, and insolubles percentage. Viscosity is to deal with the state of being thick or sticky. In this case, it'll be with how well the oil does flow or does not flow. So looking at it in my case, the value should be between 56 and 63, and mine comes in from this test at 57.4, which is right where it should be. The next value there is the flash point in degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, my flash point was over 395 degrees, and the value should be over 385 degrees, so it came in right where it should be. And according to Google, in case you're unaware, the flash point is the temperature at which a particular organic compound gives off sufficient vapor to ignite an air. So it's good that mine's higher than it should be. According to Blackstone's website, it says if fuel is present in the oil, the viscosity in the flash point will often be lower than the stated line in the values should be column. A high viscosity may show, show oil oxidation or high levels of soot, and it can also show an oil additive in use, which is good that mine came in right in the values where they should be. Now next up is fuel percentage. Uh, according to Blackstone's website, it says that this indicates the amount of volatile fuel dilution found in the oil, which I think that that's kind of self-explanatory, but my fuel percentage came in at less than 0.5%, and the value should be less than 2%, so I'm satisfied with how that came in. The antifreeze percentage, according to Blackstone's website, says that this indicates the amount of antifreeze found in the oil. A question mark means we found possible traces of coolant, but not enough to definitively say that it's there, so... Fortunately, I had no question mark, and fortunately, I had no value in that column, and it seems that I never have read anything in that column, so I'm not leaking any antifreeze into my engine oil, which is great to hear. The same goes from the water percentage. It says this indicates the amount of water found in the oil. Once again, I read flat zeros, and I never have read anything above that, which is great to see. It means that there's no water getting in my engine as well. Last but not least is the insolubles percentage category. Blackstone's website says, Insolubles are solid material present in the oil. They are typically free carbon from the oxidation of the oil itself, along with the blow-by past the rings. So, my insolubles percentage came in at 0.1%. Uh, it's good compared to the 0.6% that it should be underneath of, and my past results are also within spec, so that's great to see. So, there you have all the information covered in a Blackstone Laboratories oil analysis report. Uh, that shows how the oil is doing in my case on a 250,000 mile Lexus GX, and I'm pretty happy to say that it's holding up pretty dang well. Uh, the engine's still running strong, it still feels like it's running strong, it still feels like it has adequate power, so overall I can't complain, but it's always nice to have a breakdown and have the experts look at it just to make sure they think the same. So, once again, I got that from Blackstone Laboratories. I'll link their website down below because I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Uh, tests are $30, you can request the kit free online, and they just send you a little 
test kit with information, instructions on how to use it. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. You can just do it or you can drop it off and have a shop do it. I've done that before as well. But once again, it's a super simple, easy process. I hope this video gave you some insight onto what the tests entail of and how much they can show you and how a 250,000 mile Toyota engine is still running like it's a brand new. So I'm glad to see it's running all right. I hope this information was helpful, useful, however you may see it. So thank you for watching. I enjoy it. I appreciate all the support that my channel has been given and hopefully we have many thousand more miles to come from the Lexus. So thanks again for watching. Any questions, comments, leave them below and hopefully I can answer them.